Thank you for making Locked On Yankees your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms. On today's show, Joel Sherman says the Yankees won't pay for a top shortstop, then wonders if they'll regret getting rid of Andrew Velasquez and Tyler Wade. Oh, right. In case you didn't hear, Tyler Wade was traded to the Angels today. Plus, we have more about who was DFA'd over the weekend. And we're going to have a, not a debate, but we're going to talk about Tyler Wade versus Clint Frazier. All that next on Locked On Yankees. You are Locked On Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone. Happy Monday. It is November 22nd. We're in the week of Thanksgiving. Can you believe it? I am joined by Abby Mastracco. Abby, how are you on this kind of well, no, the sun's coming out. It was gloomy, and now the sun's coming out here. Uh, it's, it's it's not coming out in Brooklyn. <laughs> it's definitely not coming out in Brooklyn, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm up in Rockland County, so I'm a little west, north and west. And yeah, I just noticed, like, I looked outside and thought, I'm seeing blue sky. That's lovely. Just in time yeah. for the sun to go down in an it's hour. Still pretty gray here. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, It's it's been a... F- kind of busy weekend. Uh, We talked on Friday that it was just ahead of the Rule 5 thing and that things were going to happen. The Yankees made things happen. We're going to talk about that in a bit before we get into that. You can find us in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, Spotify, Stitcher. You can watch us on YouTube. And when you get into your car, you can tell your smart device to play podcast Locked on Yankees. You can find me on Twitter at Stace Gotts. And Abby, where can everyone find you? Uh, Abby Mastraco on Twitter. (laughs) Um, so yeah, a bunch of moves, some of them kind of shocking. Um, I honestly never thought the Yankees would ever get rid of Tyler Wade. I just figured he'd be (laughs) one of those guys who would just constantly be around. And the first shock was that he was DFA'd on Friday ahead of the rule five deadline. Mm -hmm. And then we found out today that he was traded to the angels. Now I believe it was cash considerations and a player to be named Yeah. I think it's and or a player to be named later. Yeah, uh, it, I think so. I mean, look, everyone can use cash in this in this economy. I know I can, so. <laughs> I know, really, anyone who has cash considerations for me, it's almost Christmas. I need yeah. some money to buy Christmas gifts for people. <laughs> so, you know, hit me up on Venmo or whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I really, Tyler Wade was one of those guys I never thought the Yankees would get rid of. And I was actually floored and kind of, almost proud in a way that the Yankees decided <laughs> to be like, you know what? We've seen enough of Tyler Wade. Not that he's bad. It's just, no, he's a good player, but he's the kind of player that's expendable. Yeah. Ultimately he's expendable. He you can get another left-handed bench bat. You can get another left-handed, you know, utility guy. Right. There, and it, it's, that's not <laughs> difficult to replace. And he's out of, he's right. out of minor league options. You right. have to pass him through waivers. Right. So along with, uh, Tyler Wade, Clint Frazier, also designated for assignment, which is sad, just considering everything going on with him. And, you know, the injury he had in 2018, head injuries are just really tricky and can affect you for a really long time. And he seemed to have issues not quite relating to it, but sort of, because I believe they said he had vertigo this year, which I've had vertigo. Well, and that is a sign of post-concussive symptom. Um, Working in the NHL, I see this a lot. Um, Head injuries are not a linear recovery. Mm. They can affect you for years at a time or years to come. He's And he's had a couple and he's had some recurring issues with them. So maybe the vertigo had nothing to do with the head injury, but it is a a symptom of post-concussive syndrome. And if he's still dealing with that, then you know, you just feel for the guy because yeah. he, you you know how bad he wanted it this year. He really did. I wanted it for him. I really did. And I, and I, I've talked about him so much on this show that um, I, I, I found out this weekend that you can figure out how much a podcast has talked about an individual player. And I found out that Locked On Yankees has talked about Clint Frazier. Well, now it's 32 episodes talking about Clint Frazier, <laughs> but up until this weekend, it was 31 because I talked about him a lot, especially when he, you know, showed everyone in 2020 what he can actually do with playing time. And I was so excited, thought that everything was finally going his way. And 
then 2021 happened. And it was just such a bummer because, um, as everyone always talked about, you know, when the Yankees got him, his legendary bat speed. And um, I love that kind of thing when I see a guy bat and just see how fast the bat moves through the zone. And I just really was pulling for him. And I'm really bummed. Um, Aaron Boone said this morning that um, he doesn't believe the journey is over for Clint Frazier, which I don't know what that means. Um, if he means, you know, the Yankees can somehow get him back, or if that means his journey in baseball, which hopefully it's not, hopefully he can come out of this, you know, healthy and able to play for someone else. Well, you know, let's say the Yankees try and offer him a minor league deal. Um, is he going to take that? Right. Is he Because he has shown that he has, he is a major league outfielder. So, um, and Look, I'm not saying that's what the Yankees are planning on doing. I the Boone, I saw the Boone quote as well, and I kind of read that as his journey in, in baseball because I think there's going to be somebody else who takes a chance on him. Uh, now, can he pass a physical uh, with some of the injuries that he's had? I don't – in fact, I don't I – sh- I, know, I know head injuries are taken into account in um, other sports. I, I actually need to figure out how much of – how much that might take into – how much that might affect a physical in baseball. Right. Um, like I said, sometimes I get the two sports confused. I like, there's so many details to keep track of, but. Uh, Plus head injuries aren't a common thing in baseball as common as they would be in a sport like hockey or football yeah, or where there's I, more contact. You know, I, it's like I said, it's not a linear recovery. So he may be living with the effects of this for the rest of his life. It's about managing it. So if he can manage these symptoms, if he can manage post-concussive syndrome, then he, I, I, he could have a, a career ahead of a nice long career ahead of him. Uh, if we want, and like, if you want to talk about it from a pure baseball standpoint, um, he needs to get better defensively. Right. Right. And he you was, know, <laughs> he did get better this. He did. There were still some miscues this year. Right. Mm-hmm. Everyone's going to have them. It's a long season. Yeah. Um, and sometimes, you know, I mean, you see guys who play the outfield all the time. Sometimes, things happen and they take a step the wrong way or they take a step too late or too soon or something like that. And it's just something he really needs to work on. And I felt like with regular playing time that would help him. And then everything came to a screeching halt. So it's, it's rare that a team gives up on a prospect that they have put so many, put so much time, effort and, and invested so many resources into. I know that he, you know, the Yankees didn't draft him. The Indians drafted him. But uh, when he came to New York, it, when you come as a draft pick like that to an organization um, as a very high profile, high, high pick, uh, you you're still treated almost as if the, that organization had drafted you. They, they're still going to put the same resources into you that they would put in for their own first round picks. And it's just, I, I was a little bit surprised. I guess I wasn't necessarily surprised. He probably could use a change of scenery at this point. Yeah. Sometimes that really benefits a player. I, It might be time to part ways on both sides. The Yankees, you know, they, they've got to sort their outfield out. And at this point, they don't know that they can count on him to be a part of the outfield because of the head injuries, which is very unfortunate. Now, what I hate, though, because I saw this a little bit on Twitter today, people were saying it's his fault. He can't stay healthy. That's not the case. I I hate when fans say that. I hate when fans say, oh yeah, you got to get rid of the guy because he just can never stay healthy. It's such an unfortunate thing. And head injuries, if you've ever experienced them, they they mess with your mental health. They. Uh It's just an awful thing to go through. And I just would like to. Yeah. I don't have vertigo from a head injury, but I have it and I don't know why I have it because I've never been to a doctor, but I know it's vertigo. I've had it since probably 2008 and it flares up when I'm stressed and it is the worst, especially when it comes out of nowhere, because the dizziness in vertigo is not your regular dizziness. You will sometimes feel like a room is flipping. And it's the strangest feeling in the world. You can be lying in bed, and if you tilt your head slightly the wrong way, it feels like someone is pushing your head into the pillow. And then you feel like you're going to throw up. It's just, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. And, you know, knowing that Clint Frazier has been suffering from that for a while is just, I feel him. I totally understand what he's going through. It is not fun at all. And... I don't even know how to segue into this next thing, but I'm going to have to try. <laughs> Do you watch a lot of TV? A little bit. 
Yeah, I do. And <laughs> does this sound familiar? You've got one device that lets you catch the game live, another that lets you stream your favorite shows, you're watching sports highlights on your phone, and you've got your neighbor's best friend's login for the good stuff. <laughs> well, I want to tell you about a simple way to get all that entertainment you love without the hassle and a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream, and it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before so you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part, there's no annual contract. Contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device is required and the content varies by package. Thanks again for making Locked On Yankees your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms. Now, other moves that the Yankees made ahead of the Rule 5 deadline. Now, I mentioned Miguel Andujar, which was another kind of shocking move for me. Not shocking, again, in that he wasn't really doing much of anything, right? But um, no, he really struggled to take the Rugio Odor. Right. The Rugio Odor one was kind of uh, a long time coming. I know yeah. that Yankees, the Yankees love him. Aaron Judge posted a picture on his Instagram mm -hmm. of the two of them walking together out of the dugout. And it looks like a father and a son because Rugi Odor is so much smaller than Aaron <laughs> Judge. It's such a funny picture. But those guys adored him. And I liked him for what he was on the team. I they got a lot of production out of him. They maximized yeah. his capabilities to right. 100%. Right. I mean, he hit a few big home runs and sure, yeah. by the end of the season, he didn't do that much other than be a cheerleader. But I loved that about him. I loved that he was the first guy out of the dugout whenever someone hit a home run. And he would always someone put together um, a video of him and all of his pitching mound interactions because he was always one of the first ones out there. And he was oh, and it was always like, why is he there? <laughs> like, even when it was someone who, you know, because sometimes you would think, OK, he's going out there to help translate if it's a pitcher who doesn't speak English. And then sometimes he'd be going out there anyway for a, like, it was like, what are you, what is he doing? Um, I was kind of surprised that the Yankees did that, but not really because they needed to, they needed to make room on the 40 man. And he was definitely expendable. And like you said, he did have some production when he first showed up, there were some big home runs that he hit and, you know, he's so small. And sometimes when he hit those home runs, it was kind of like, is that ball actually going to get out of here? And then it got out by a lot. And, you know, he did well for what he was, um, yeah. but yeah, he needed to. Uh, that one was not surprising at all to me. I mean, they he did come up big in some big spots, as you said, and you know he was a he was a good bench piece. They got all they could get out of him this year, but I mean, if you want to get better, you need to fortify that roster a little bit, and you also have to protect some of your prospects. So a waiver wire pickup like him. I, I just didn't see that there was a, a role for him really moving forward. Right. And then they also traded Donnie Sands, who was a catcher, and Nick Nelson to the Phillies for two low-level prospects. Poor Nick Nelson. What? He just could not get it together this year. And it was whew, painful watching him pitch. Maybe the change of scenery will do well for him in Philadelphia with Joe Girardi and the rest of them over there. Um, yeah, that was... That was um, <laughs> when I think about when I think about some of the outings that poor guy had and what his numbers were at the end of the year, yeah, this will be a good move for him. Now, what I was very happy about, and I spoke about this on a previous show, Stephen Writings, who was one of those kids that came up toward the end of the year, came out of nowhere, pitched really well, and he's one of those stories where he wasn't even sure he was going to play baseball again after the Kansas City Royals dropped him. And the Yankees took a chance on him and he came out and had, you know, he had like a really good outing where he got the first two guys out right away. Then he gave up a hit and it looked kind of iffy. And then he, uh, I think he struck out the side in his first um, outing. And it was like, where did this kid come from? And hearing about that, hearing that he nearly gave up on baseball and the Yankees gave him this chance to pitch. And now he's on their 40 man roster. That's, just you know, I, I spoke a about great story. Yeah, I spoke about the Lucas Lecky thing. It's kind of reminding me of that, and I just <laughs> I was so happy when I saw that they added him to the forty man. Yeah, it's a pretty great story. I mean, I love that. 
I, look, I'm supposed to break down balls and strikes and, you know, skill sets and scouting reports, but I'm a reporter. I'm a writer. I, I, out of anything, like, I, I, I root for good stories, and um, I love hearing things like that. I mean, the thing that cracked me up about him, he facially, like, physically reminded me of the bad guy from A Christmas Story if he were just you know, smaller and younger, just the way he looked. I was like, wow, he looks just like I have like to him. go back and look now. Yeah, yeah. It was, I'll have uh... to go back and look. I, I, That's not something that I can say that I noticed. <laughs> but I also haven't seen. Christmas Story is not one of those that's, like, on my rotation every year, so. <laughs> yeah. Although, how can you escape it? Don't you ever accidentally run into it when it's on 24 hours on two channels? <laughs> we don't have cable. We uh we've got streaming. We're in the twenty. I shouldn't say that. You just we just <laughs> direct TV. <laughs> um, I uh, I mean it's, I do occasionally catch it when I'm in hotels. Um, right. But um yeah we my roommate and I don't have cable. <laughs> That's so funny. And who else? Okay, so as as Waldo Cabrera. Oh okay, Ron. Mm, Maranacchio. Is that how you say it? I'm so bad with Italian last names. <laughs> Probably. Well, if it's two C's like mine, it might be Marinaccio. Well, no, I mine's think that's it. It's like ours is weird. The, I, I don't know why mine is Mastrocco. That every, because on my dad's other side of the family, on my maternal grandparents' side, we were, it, the last name was Riccio with two C's. Hmm. So I don't know why one side of the family, probably just like the regional dialect, like where we were from, because my, my last name, my grandparents came from Rome and my, but on my um, my grandma's side, they came from Naples, and that's the Riccio with a C H. Ah. So I don't know. It's yeah. it could be Marinaccio, it could be Marinaccio. Let's just it, you know, I maybe think, if he's from Rome, it's a hard C. <laughs> my I think my Italian family is from around Naples, if I'm not mistaken. That's my grandma on my mom's side's family, because my mom's Irish, Italian, my dad's Greek, which is why I have the last name if you're watching on YouTube that thing in front of you with nine letters should be 10 letters we lost a letter somewhere I don't know how but <laughs> yeah um it, it would explain a lot about me that I'm Irish Italian <laughs> and Greek and then we have who else JP Sears was added to the 40 man as I said as Waldo Cabrera and Everson Pereira is that how you say that? Because some of these guys I know and some of these guys I don't. And if I said your name wrong, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but those are the guys that made the 40 man. So the Yankees did all those flurry of roster moves ahead of the rule five. You know, everyone who brings up the rule five now thinks of Garrett Whitlock. No one knew that Garrett Whitlock was going to go to the Red Sox and do what he did. He was coming off Tommy John. No one knew. And everyone makes it seem like the Yankees made the biggest mistake that they've ever made letting him go. Okay, true. But you have to know how to scout your own system. True. That's true. You have to know how to scout your own system. Yeah. And that is not something that every team does. Well, the Mets are known to not be able to scout their own system. You have to know how to scout your own system. And sure, you can't see things like that happening. But what you can see is you just you, you can't look. We're not going to predict the future. But like you've got to scout your own system a little bit better than that. You've, you've got or and you know, maybe somebody maybe there's somebody and there's probably somebody in um, the Yankees player development system right now who's kicking themselves and saying, I saw it and I said something and they still got rid of him anyway. Sometimes you are and you're an expendable name, um, but it does look bad. <laughs> it's still it's every that is every team's biggest fear. Giving up somebody like Clint Frazier. That's a perfect example. That's uh -huh. every team's biggest fear that that player is going to go to another team, absolutely tear up, like set the world on fire with that other team. And then all of baseball says, what are they doing? that has him playing like this and what did the other team do Not wrong do. Mm -hmm. it That's makes probably, when, when it... somebody goes somewhere and just absolutely catches fire it makes the other team it makes the team that he previously came from look bad mm -hmm. it, it, the garrett whitlock situation the fact that it was a rule five it's a little bit more it stings a little bit more just a little bit more yeah because i the reason why I've spoken about Clint Frazier so much on the show was I, my biggest fear was that, um, because, you know, his name would come up around trade deadlines and all that stuff because people would always think that the Yankees were going to get rid of him that way. And my biggest fear was that he would go to an AL East rival and just beat up on the Yankees for the rest of his career. And I feel like that could happen. He and could. 
He could. I mean, yeah. <laughs> possible. Yeah. Maybe Tampa wants to take a flyer on him. <laughs> you know, oh, they fix you... guys. Yeah. Although, uh, I don't know. I don't know how comfortable he'd be playing in a place where they play half their games on turf and playing in the outfield there. I mean, that kind of. If it's would... a deal, it's a deal, though. You know? True. It That's depends. True. I mean, who, who with with the personnel in place that they have, maybe he, that's something that's enticing to a lot of people. Yeah. Um, if he needs to, if he needs a, a landing spot to start over and Tampa's saying we can fix you. Maybe. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. The turf is, is a thing. Um, but at the same time, I don't know what the market looks like for him yet. Right. It'll be interesting to see. But again, that I always said it in the 31 episodes where I spoke about him before this one, <laughs> One of my biggest fears was that he would go to like the Jays or the Rays. Those were the two teams in my mind that I always was like, oh God, you know, I didn't really think the Red Sox would ever get him. But <laughs> at this point, now that I just put that out into the universe, good. Cl Clint Frazier, Red Thunder on the Red Sox will definitely happen <laughs> now that I said it. So you're welcome, Red Yankee Thunder fans. And, and I apologize in advance. So as I mentioned at the top, it's the week of Thanksgiving. I love Thanksgiving. You have Good food, good treats. My refrigerator is full of them right now, and I can't wait to dig into it on Thursday. But maybe you want a yummy dessert that isn't so full of calories and sugar, which means it's the perfect time for Built Bars. Built Bar is the new holiday dessert. Feast on something delicious and feel good about it. One slice of pie has upwards of 300 calories, and that's on the low end. Most Built Bars are only 130 calories with 4 grams of sugar and plenty of protein. Replace the coconut cream pie with a Built Bar that's coconut and really good and covered in chocolate. Or go for a raspberry Built Bar instead of the raspberry pie. There's lots of good flavors to replace any pie. They're low-calorie, low-carb, low-fat high in protein. They're covered in 100% real chocolate and they're a good option for when you're hungry. Built Bar has new surprises all month. Limited time flavors are arriving at Built.com regularly, so check the site often. And there's nothing like a Built Bar Black Friday. Mark your calendar. This Friday is Black Friday and it'll be a huge event with all sorts of surprises. Go to Built.com, use our promo code LOCKED15 and you'll get 15% off your order. Again, that's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Thanks again for making Locked On Yankees your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms. So we joked before we were filming that we were going to not debate, but <laughs> with the news that Tyler Wade was traded to the Angels and with the news that Clint Frazier was DFA'd, we're kind of going to go with a Tyler Wade versus Clint Frazier sort of thing here, because there's a lot of talk in Yankee social media all over the place. Cause I know not everyone is on social media and the whole world doesn't live on Twitter. Like I do, but Abby and I you're, see enough on Twitter. You're not living on Twitter. You're really not missing anything. Your mental health is probably better for it. Yes. Yes. I, I always tell people to take breaks from Twitter and do I No, And I should, because it does. I it do. helps. It helps your mental health when no, you're not on Twitter all the time. I yeah. barely looked at it all weekend. It was yeah. great. <laughs> Actually, there was like a four-hour portion of Saturday that I, I didn't look at Twitter at all because I was writing. And when I went back, I thought to myself, oh, my God, what did I miss? Which is the worst thing in the world. But it's true because I feel like I get all my news on Twitter, and that's how I know things are happening Sometimes, on, yeah. it, on it, the planet. It can feel like that at times. I, um, I had a wedding on Saturday. My landlord got married. <laughs> Well, she had already gotten married. Then we, we celebrated because it was a very small wedding that she did. So she celebrated with some friends in New York. Um, and like towards the end of the night, her husband says, because he's a big hockey fan. And he asked me a question and he was like, oh, did you see that? It was like some play that he wanted me to see. And I was like, nope, didn't see it. And he's like, you didn't see it on Twitter. I was like, I'm at your wedding. You want me to look <laughs> at Twitter at your wedding? Come on. Now, okay. Before we get into this, my cousin, um, had it was like a vow renewal because she got married last year couldn't have the big wedding because of covid and then she was able to have uh, this was september 30th when the yankees were playing the blue jays and it was a big series you know it's the end of the season and you know the yankees were still like scratching and clawing their way into a playoff spot and i'm on the dance floor wearing a jumpsuit or pant yeah jumpsuit with pockets so i could hold my phone 
thank god for pockets and i kept checking i'm dancing with my bride (laughs) cousin and all my cousins checking the yankee score and then i recorded my post game video because we have to do that for locked on in the hallway in front of the bathrooms at the catering place in my jumpsuit because i had to get my job done and you know people were trying to come in and they'd stop and be like what is this person doing with a camera? I had a try a mini I brought a mini tripod with me to my cousin's wedding in order to get my work done. So yeah, it was uh and I'm checking Twitter every five seconds and I'm like, oh no, Chapman's in, he's gonna blow it. And then he didn't, and the Yankees won. And it was very exciting. But yeah, I it's bad people. So if you don't go on Twitter, don't start. Don't, don't start. do it. Just stay away from it. You're not but anything. what but what we see on Twitter is a lot of people are like as you said with i feel like uh, frazier couldn't get away with anything and people blamed him for everything that happened to him and tyler wade for some reason (laughs) was like this guy no wrong yeah they put him on this pedestal meanwhile i was constantly bitching and moaning about tyler wade because the (laughs) one thing i needed him to do that he could nine times out of 10 never do was bunt to get on base. It's like, dude, no one's expecting you to hit a home run. Learn how to bunt. You're fast. Like, don't even, you don't even have to do a perfect bunt. Nobody, knows how, bunt, nobody knows how to bunt anymore. This is why. So like <laughs> I, I went to college at Long Beach State and like pitching and defense, it, they throw like, is it, they teach the fundamentals in such a different way there. I guess not like a different way, but they just emphasize the fundamentals so much that um, like anytime if the leadoff runner gets on base, no matter what, the next guy is dropping down a bunt. It does not matter if he is your best hitter. He's dropping down a bunt because that's just what they teach. I mean, maybe they don't, they're either not that strict anymore, but it used to be like that. Mm-hmm. So, like, I've joked about this with a lot of the other dirtbags in the league, and they're like, nobody knows how to bunt. Like, Jeff McNeil, he can he can throw down a bunt, man. He is He's a fantastic – and everyone says, don't bunt, just don't bother. Well, sometimes you need to do, like, strategically. There's nothing wrong with it once in a while. Right. But, you know, he'll try to bunt and he'll pop out, which thank God my dad's not alive right now just (laughs) because of that, because there were so many times where Tyler Wade did something like that. And I could just picture Gus just not flipping out, but just being like he used to do this two hand dismissive wave if the Yankees didn't do something. (laughs) He'd be watching the TV like. You know, and I feel like he would be that way with Tyler Wade. It just drove me crazy. I mean, I saw Jason Giambi bunt for a double accidentally because Jason Giambi was a dirtbag because the shift he played at Long Beach State. Yeah, because the shift was so overshifted, and he kind of just went boop, and it went down the left field line. No one was by the left fielder was because Giambi was a dirtbag. He knows okay. how to bunt. Yeah, and I thought to myself. Why does he do this all the time? Because then they'd stop shifting on him because they'd be like, well, if we're going to keep uh, giving up doubles to him, then we might as well not shift. And this was 2005. You know, that was a long time ago. Joey Gallo accidentally bunted a, into a single or a double this season with the Yankees. And Tell it was a really state. And it was a really good bunt. And you see some of these guys who attempt it, who you think would be good at it because they're like Tyler Wade, where their game is more speed. They're just so bad at it. And <laughs> it just drove me nuts. That was the one thing that drove me nuts about him. And I said it on Twitter a number of times. I said, no one's expecting you to hit a 400 foot bomb. Like, what are you doing? Learn how to bunt. You'll get on base nine times out of 10 with your speed. What are you doing? And then Clint Frazier gets a head injury and people are blaming him for, well, he can't stay healthy. It's like, it's a head injury. <laughs> I just hate when people blame players for not being able to stay healthy. Like, sure, sometimes it is beyond their, or it is like in their control, you know, like they, they are overtraining, they're lifting uh, to try and look chiseled instead of just trying to be in baseball shape. That happens. We've Gian discussed Carlos. that a little bit. <laughs> but, before the season, before the season, Giancarlo Stanton. <laughs> but like, that's not what this is. This right. is a head injury. This is so beyond his Nobody chooses to have a head injury. Yeah. I, I hate when people blame players for not being able to stay healthy anyways. And there is sort of like, sometimes like teams will do that too. Like they won't say it out loud, but I've heard, I've heard scouts and front office people in other and not just in baseball i've heard them say it in other sports like well yeah but like we like him he's just it's just that he's he can't stay healthy and it's like you know it's almost like it's his fault like oh yeah he's like as if they're like i don't know 
accusing them of like drinking too much or something like that's something you can do something about but like not being able to stay healthy and it's not always about like the diet or the exercise either it's like they're blaming the injuries once Mm -hmm. sometimes just once you're labeled as injury prone you never shake that which is unfortunate right and out of those two players out of clint frazier and tyler wade clint frazier is more valuable i would think i would say he's probably got a higher upside yeah um tyler wade was not one of those highly touted guys and no he's a guy he's but he's not he's not a bad player no. and he will fit in you know maybe he'll fit in really well with the angels and do what he's they a need southern california to kid he's from like two hours away from anaheim yeah you he's know he's from marietta so that's big angels country there like that's that is their prime fan base their prime like neighbor area for their fan base but it's just um, funny how Yankee fans will attach themselves to certain guys, which was why I was shocked. Like I said earlier in the show, I was shocked that the Yankees actually got rid of Tyler Wade. I didn't think it would ever happen. And it almost felt like, not it felt, not that it felt like the fan base was dictating it, but it just felt very, I don't know, it just was weird uh, how <laughs> they glommed on to him, of all people. And they didn't feel the same way I did watching him because I felt like, why isn't anyone else feeling the same way I'm feeling about Tyler Wade and getting annoyed when he does stupid stuff? And other people are like, oh, it's okay. No, it's not okay. He shouldn't. No, no, he shouldn't be popping into foul territory, bunting on strike two. No. <laughs> so clearly we know who Stacey would choose if she was the GM. Oh, Clint Frazier all the way. Hello. Yeah. Like I said, we've now it's 32 episodes of Clint Frazier. So the moral of the story is. No one chooses to have a head injury. Right. But you can choose to not learn how to properly bunt. Right. But yeah, I mean, I just, I don't get it. I feel like, and it, it almost feels the same way. I'm not going to get into a whole tangent because we have to end, end the show, but it almost feels like the same thing when basketball players can't throw free throws. Trust me. Can't shoot free throws. Yeah. Shoot. They shoot. Yeah. They don't, they don't I throw. Know. I mean, and so, I... sometimes you see them sort of, Shaq would just sort of, you know, heave it. Yeah. Chris Dudley <laughs> would. Chris Dudley had the worst uh, free throw form ever. What? Look him up on YouTube, yes. kids. That's a, that is the correct term. Yeah, I know. Just shoot free it's, throws. it's the brain today that I mentioned before the show. Because I know I used to actually write about basketball and haven't done that in a while. But um, yeah, uh, the next show we're going to be discussing the Hall of Fame ballot came out. And uh, that's going to be um, a fun discussion because <laughs> we have has opinions. I have opinions and you're going to hear them. And poor Abby's going to hear them too, because we're going to be <laughs> recording the uh, Hall of Fame edition of Locked on Yankees for Tuesday's show. So look forward to that for now. That's it for this episode of Locked on Yankees, which is part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to remind you that you can listen to the show in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, Spotify, Stitcher, or anywhere else you get your podcasts. You can subscribe to us on YouTube. I think we just passed 600 subscribers, so thank you for that, everyone. We appreciate it. And when you get into your car, you can tell your smart device to play podcast Locked on Bets. Now make your second listen of the day Locked on Bets, your daily one-stop shop for all your gambling needs. Locked on Bets, hosted by your boy Q with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. One more thing, if you could be so kind, please rate the podcast and spread the word about this podcast to your fellow Yankee fans. We would really appreciate it. Enjoy your Monday, and Abby and I will see you on Tuesday.